is Cleveland still landlord friendly? Wow. What a loaded question. That is a loaded question, dude. Is Cleveland landlord friendly? Woo! The answer's not going to be simple. Let's talk. <laughs> Welcome to the show, y'all. This is the Ask James Wise Show, and this is where I answer your questions as well as answer questions and provide you information about topics I think you should be asking about, right? And today's question, is Cleveland still landlord friendly? <laughs> Boy, that is a loaded one, man. That is so complicated, right? That is tough. For those of you that do not know, I started in this game, started investing out here in Cleveland 2009, long time ago. What is that? That's about 15 years now, okay? And we are, as I talk to you right now, right? It's July 2024, right? 2009 and 2020, 24 uh, could not be two different time periods, two different real estate markets. They can't be any more different, right? I guess is what I'm saying, right? For the longest time, Cleveland. The new kid on the block, the hot, sexy, up-and-coming market, right? Cash flow was so big. Investors from all over were freaking fighting each other and salivating over the opportunity uh, to get into this sexy cash flow market, right? Properties so cheap. And then, of course, over the last 15 years, y'all, money was free, right? We're getting freaking investor loans at 3% interest. I mean, dude. Those of us who got in, got in at the right time, we got super rich, right? We got really rich, right? Like, uh, we made a lot of money, okay? When I started, I was working at Radio Shack, making 30 k a year, okay? Today, I got an 11-car garage, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that have a similar story with real estate investing, right? And Cleveland was a big part of that, and the market, so good. Couldn't have been better for investors, right? And people's questions, though, like, is it still that hot market in 2024, right? And the answer is no, but yes, but no, right? This is a multi-layered question, dude. This is not something that can be answered in, like, a tweet, right? You can't answer it in a tweet. You can't answer this kind of a question in a bigger pockets post, dude. This is a very like layered uh, and nuanced answer, right? Like just to the very specific part of the question, like is it landlord friendly compared to what, right? Like is it as landlord friendly as it was back then? No, not even close. It's a, it's a, lot, uh, it's a lot less landlord friendly than it used to be, right? You guys you know, probably know Justin Bibbs, the mayor, right? Justin Bibbs got a vendetta, dude. He's got an itch to try to get rid of out-of-state investors, right? He's got a vendetta against Holton Wise. Y'all know, you remember when he did a press conference on the porch of one of our properties, right? And he doesn't like our merchandise. He doesn't like our branding. Um, you know, although truth be told, a lot of that, guys, let's be real, if we could be real. Um, I don't know if Justin Bibb really cares too much about out-of-state investors, uh, or really cares too much about Holton Wise, at least. Uh, it, it just sounded good uh, to his constituents uh, when he was running, right? He hasn't really, honestly, targeted Holton Wise uh, like he said he was. Uh, but just in general, though, he has definitely made the landscape for investors uh, much more difficult. And we'll get into some of that. Um, so he is definitely, you know, he's got a job to do. And the people that vote, right, are not landlords, right? Uh, the people that vote for him, okay, he's he's got a constituency. He's got an audience uh, 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 of poor or moderately poor people, uh, many of which are renters, okay? That's who votes for him, right? Um, you know, landlords, conservatives, stuff like that, they ain't voting for Justin Bibb. So, of course, Justin Bibb's going to be like, Holton Wise, the enemy of people – you know, that are going to vote for me. Like, what's a better fucking campaign slogan for a progressive Democrat than, hey, 
your landlord makes you pay rent. Your landlord's bad. Fuck your landlord. Vote for me. You won't have to pay rent. And they're like, oh, fuck it, Justin. This is great. Smash cut to 2024 and you're losing the Browns, bro. Damn. But anyway, by the way, holy shit. All the people that want stuff for free, you know, those are the people that vote for progressive mayors like Justin Bibb, the people that want the government to give them shit for free. <laughs> those people seem to forget that the only way you get free shit is by taxing people who are actually making money, right? And, you know, all the investors and the out-of-state investors that Bibb claims that he hates, well, that's where all the money's coming from. They're the ones who are actually paying uh, the taxes for all these free services that he offers to people in exchange for votes. And then you go <laughs> way even further, and this motherfucker is about to lose the fucking Cleveland Browns. Dude, how many millions upon millions upon millions <laughs> upon millions of taxpayer dollars is going to be lost? So I don't know how he's going to be able to give everything for free uh, to the people he's promising freebies to uh, without all that tax revenue coming in. And I don't know how he's going to afford to get that Cleveland police housing uh, or the Cleveland police uh, staffing uh, up to where it needs to be, that shortage. How the fuck's he going to get rid of that shortage? Anyway, with all that said, right, these are, are some of the issues. And then he also they also had that uh, other law where they talked about uh, criminally prosecuting uh, property management companies uh, if the owner of the property happened to live outside of the county they would hold the actual property management companies criminally responsible uh, if that particular owner didn't pay to fix a violation right so we have all those things that would lead you to say is Cleveland still landlord friendly in 2024 no not by a long shot because of all that stuff however if you're comparing it to other locations, yeah, we're still pretty landlord friendly, even with all the crap I just mentioned. Because you got to understand, from 09 to 2024, over that last 15 year period, dude, most every state, most every area in the USA has gotten less landlord friendly. Um, that is kind of the direction that things are going. So, like, if you're still comparing Cleveland to places like. Los Angeles, Seattle, New Jersey, New York. We're very landlord-friendly still, um, but not as much as we used to be. But here's the thing, and, and this is the, the, the saving grace for the city of Cleveland. Cleveland, y'all, is in a red state. Ohio itself is actually a very landlord-friendly state. Yeah, there is a progressive mayor in the city of Cleveland who's got a fucking boner up his butt over landlords. Um, however, you see this a lot in liberal cities, uh, that are in red states. They will try to, to go over new legislation and they'll push it through in their city council, which is usually like, you know, people that are not like highly educated or, you know, you get like fucking just, you don't get like seasoned professionals with like an extreme amount of education in like small city councils dude like it pays like 25k 35k a year right these are not like highly sought after jobs right you're 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 dealing with people in the lower income brackets okay and you're getting lower skills right but they'll hear shit and these people have no economic um ec economic background or or skills right they don't know about you know causation and you know reaction and and they, they just they're they, they hear shit that sounds good and they don't realize that when they actually implement it, it's not going to work how they thought it was going to right that's that's what i'm trying to say um and cleveland's no different so you'll get these cities like cleveland and they'll pass this legislation and shit uh but eventually when it's challenged in a higher court a county court you know it fucking falls to the wayside, right? One specifically that I want to talk about, right? Uh, well, a couple of them. You had the lead. Uh, I don't even know if I mentioned that, right? All the new lead laws in Cleveland. For a while, Cleveland was not letting you evict tenants if you didn't get your property land, uh, lead certified landlords. So, like, if you did not get your property lead certified in the city of Cleveland, you would not be able to evict a tenant. The judge would be like, nope, you didn't get it landlord certified. Uh, Nope, Mr. Landlord, you didn't get it lead paint certified. 
You cannot evict somebody until um, you get it lead certified. The issue with that is that's not the fucking law, okay? That's just a rogue housing court judge thinking she could do uh, whatever she wants, and she was trying to legislate from the bench, and that was challenged in a higher court, and that shit was shut the fuck down, okay? So that no longer happens, right? Um, and then you get other instances uh, where the city itself, they put laws on the books that go against constitutional rights we have, state rights, things of that nature. And one of those uh, is the, the, you know, the new one uh, where Justin Bibb, you know, he was doing his press tours about all this, like a big win for, you know, progressives and shit, where if there's an out-of-state owner, okay, the property manager has to be local, to the area, and they are criminally held responsible uh, for, like, a building code violation, okay? Well, that doesn't make any sense, guys. That's not going to work, right? How can you hold someone criminally responsible for someone else's property, right? And as a matter of fact, I'm not going to give too many details uh, because the case is still pending, but one of my <laughs> employees at Holton Wise was actually randomly selected and charged criminally, uh, for a property violation that was not fixed by an owner who happened to live out of town, right? They had just found one of these employees' names on, like, uh, you know, one random form or an email, and they just decided to randomly target one of my employees and charge her criminally. And then when we went to court, uh, the judge just eviscerated just eviscerated the prosecutor, like just smoked him. Like, bro, what are you thinking? This doesn't even make sense. How did you even determine that this was the person that you were going to criminally charge? This person has like no ownership interest in this property. Even if I had Holton or Wise in my courtroom themselves, that still wouldn't fly, but you just randomly picked this person, right? And when... All of that is completely finished, y'all, and I have all of the court records and all the documentation. I will be publishing a story on that for you all to watch, and you'll see everything. All of the judge's rulings, everything. that You'll, you'll get everything from me, but uh, I'll, I'll give that to you guys a little bit later. But essentially... Uh, it's not going good for the city because that's just like unconstitutional, right? I believe at one point uh, the judge even said like, dude, even if these, you know, Holton Wise, dude, even if they wanted to fix these uh, items for this owner because this owner hired them as their property manager, if the owner didn't give them his money, didn't pay the money, even if he authorizes it, you can't expect them to pay for this other guy's property. Like, are you an idiot, right? So these are the things uh, that happen in a city like Cleveland uh, that by and large is not landlord friendly, but it's still landlord friendly compared to other places because if you have some crazy progressive judge in Los Angeles, California, and he's like, you know, crazy progressive judge, crazy progressive city council, crazy progressive mayor in L.A., right? Well, there's no saving grace. There's no red state to fall back on. You fall back on the state of California. And you all know what Gavin Newsom's about, right? So it's all blue, and then you fall back on blue, right? So Cleveland even though they try to make shit difficult and they really don't like landlords too much, we still get to fall back on higher courts in the fact that Ohio is very much a Republican state. Ohio is a very conservative state. Ohio is a very landlord-friendly state. So Cleveland itself, no. Definitely not as landlord-friendly as it used to be. It is definitely a hassle. You have to fight those folks a little bit more. But typically when you do punch, when they punch you, when you punch back, you're probably going to win because this is fucking America and we have states' rights and the state rights in Ohio. Very, very landlord-friendly. Additionally, one thing I want to leave you guys with is a lot of people that look at the Cleveland market from out of state, a lot of people who are stuck in those crazy tenant-friendly locations and the, their whole state is a fucking disaster. And, you know, just like the worst places, right? New York, Seattle, Portland, all of California, right? Those people that are looking for uh, these good low-cost cash flow markets and don't want to just have to deal with these insane progressive 
um, judges and housing courts and don't want to deal with all the bullshit would like to just be able to do honest business and not be like vilified or attacked. Ohio itself, folks, still one of the best places you could be investing. Even up in the Cleveland market, even in the Cleveland market, y'all, Cleveland ain't the only city in town, right? First of all, in the Cleveland market, Cleveland ain't the most landlord-friendly city, but there are so many other cities in and around the Cleveland market, right? I know people think they hear Cleveland, right? Because you got the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Cavs, Cleveland Indians. I mean, Cleveland Guardians, progressives, right? Uh, you got all that shit. LeBron James, he's from Cleveland. But, like, dude, Cleveland's a very small fucking piece to the Cleveland metropolitan area. Like, first of all, LeBron James ain't even fucking from Cleveland, people. He's from a different city called Akron, which not a lot of people know about. It's like a half hour down the road, right? There are so many little cities up in here that are so much more landlord-friendly that we are making a killing in. Just to give you, like, an idea of how small the city of Cleveland itself is to the Cleveland area, like the Cleveland Browns, they're leaving the city of Cleveland is what it looks like. Like, it looks like it's, like, almost a done deal. But don't worry. They ain't going too far. It looks like they're going to a different city called Brook Park, right, which is right down the road, okay? The city of Cleveland itself has, like, 350, 360,000 people. The whole Cleveland MSA is over 2 million, right? So the little city of Cleveland itself, very small dot in the overall Cleveland market. So I will tell you guys this. Is the Cleveland market still landlord-friendly in 2024? You bet your ass it is. We are still doing very well. Cleveland itself, admittedly, there are difficulties. There's still opportunity, but there are difficulties. So Cleveland itself should probably be a much smaller piece to your overall investment uh, strategy. Uh, but there is still a lot going on in the Cleveland market. And, in, folks, in Ohio, there's a lot of other good stuff, right? When I started, we were just in the Cleveland market. But now, you know, our business has grown, and we are doing business out in Toledo area, Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, Youngstown, Detroit. There is a lot. Memphis, there is a lot of business to be done, uh, especially in the Midwest, okay? There is a lot. Alabama, Birmingham, right? These are all places we've been doing business in, folks. There is a lot going on, a lot of good places to invest. Ohio, still on my top, still my top state. Cleveland market, still one of my favorite markets, albeit the city of Cleveland itself is a smaller piece to the overall investment puzzle. So that, that's how I answer the question. Like I said, couldn't be done in a tweet, couldn't be answered in an email, couldn't be answered in a Facebook post, couldn't answer it on a bigger pockets post, y'all. Uh, it's very nuanced and there's a lot going on. Let me know your thoughts on the topic. Let me know your experiences in the Cleveland market. Let me know what you think about Cleveland being landlord friendly versus some other landlord friendly markets out there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.